going. And what's up, everybody? This is Kenny here, chilling with Kenny C. And I'm very excited to be joined with my next guest. He is a returning guest. He was on the show last year celebrating release of Blue Reverb album. And he's back a few months later. He's got the Starlight music video that's out right now. Blue Reverb is such an incredible body of work, if I do say so myself. I'm joined with Carter Brady. How's it going, man? How's it going, Kenny? Great to see you again. It's been uh, it's been a bit. Um, yeah, you mentioned I've been on the show before. Um, I, I think when was I think it was May the last time I was on. Yeah. Uh, Must have been. But yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show again. Really, uh, really glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, so I heard everything turned out great for Blue Reverb. Um, and, you know, the reaction, the reviews and things like that. I've heard the album myself, Chasing Vampires, Starlight. I've heard it all from start to finish. It's an incredible body of work, my friends. So Thank you very much. On everything that you have received uh, with this project. Um, so let's talk Starlight, which is uh, you shot a music video for it. Um, just talk yeah. about that song and what led to the music video. Yeah, sure. So um first off um you know when i guess about the recording process um i ended up writing the song um just right around christmas time maybe winter of 2020 uh so it was just right before covid um and so yeah i like i had written the guitar riff and was enjoying just kind of like figuring out like a melody with it and um, I just kind of had the chorus and then a few months go more than a few months go by. And I, I think maybe it was like almost a year later, I decided to sit back down with it. And at this point, um, as you know, with Chasing Vampires, our last time we talked, that was the single I had released. But around that, this past summer was when I really kind of was like in my head, I'm going to do a full album. And, you know, given the amount of time I have, it's, it's you know, wearing a lot of people are in quarantine perfect time for an artist like myself to kind of take advantage of the moment, get as much out of it as possible. And so I just went full steam ahead into, uh, you know, a full length album. And, um, you know, Starlight was one of those. And after revisiting it, that was a song that you can hear in the beginning, the bass part. I really wanted to come up with a song that had a very strong bass line, almost reminiscent of the Motown 60s kind of sound and um, maybe something like James Jamerson or Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, kind of something like that. And um, but of course, kind of have that modern indie pop rock kind of twist to it. And so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, just came up with that bass part was just figuring out ways to kind of arrange the song with the chorus because I had the chorus, but then figuring out how to line the melody for the verse and everything else. And it came together, I think, really nicely. And I'm, I'm very I'm definitely very proud of it. And, and could, I, I wouldn't change a thing to it um but yeah i mean definitely enjoy just like working on that with the guy that's um so i actually had a, a producer help make it and you know basically um i originally from, i'm from new york and we were you know when i was at home with my family would just make that half hour trip up north to his house and um you know we were both vaccinated and so basically would just you know get together and you know ever so ever so often we'd go and, and the session would be a different song and we'd work on different things and this was a song that at first I didn't really think like it was anything special. And then he kind of, you know, he said what his favorite songs were. And he was just, I could tell he was really spending a lot of time with the song because he really liked it. And, you know, I was hearing it more and more. And uh, eventually we got most of the songs other than one. All the other songs are, there are session drummers and friends that play drums on it. I'm doing most of everything else. And so this song, I played everything except drums. And he basically got his good friend that shares a studio with him nearby to play drums on it. And he kind of has that Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters metronomic sound. Um, and you can kind of really hear that raw energy from the drum track comes in slightly after the bass. And then it really has that really cymbal crashing sound towards the bridge section. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I really was happy with how all the instrumentation came out. And then moving on to the video, um, that was something my good friend from back home, uh, his name's Alex Deland. Um, 
we got together and we were talking. I mean, he, you know, he knew I'd been doing music stuff. We hadn't talked in a while, but we'd seen each other and we basically just got together and um, we were just talking about doing a music video. And, it was, and the first one we did was Best of Two Worlds, which I released not too long ago. And then about a month or so later, we were, I reached out again. I was like, hey, I'd love to do another music video. Would you be interested? And he said, sure. So we got together and the, the previous video, Best of Two Worlds, was a lot more kind of indie DIY. Like it was filmed in my hometown. Some of it was in the backyard. Some of it was in a parking lot with this with my friends who pose as a fake band um, other than the drummer who plays on the song. And then this video that you've seen, Starlight, it was definitely something we, we were going for more of a, I guess, like a professional per se approach. Um, where it's filmed in a studio, we decided to rent out um, a space in this in New York City for a day back in late July of the summertime, and um, you know it, we got a good deal on the space. It wasn't too much money. He had a couple of his film school friends come and help, you know, with lighting and other things, so he didn't have to do everything himself. Um, but it was the whole idea was basically just to perform the song and kind of give off that sort of, you know, Brit pop kind of look. I, you could see I'm wearing the suit, almost kind of look like a Beatle with the Rickenbacker guitar. And um, I'm sure you, you're you going to get to that. But, you know, just like, yeah, like just felt, figured it would be kind of cool to do something different than we had done for the previous video. Um, and we thought the clone effect would be kind of cool having, you know, almost look like I'm doing myself or playing uh, all the instruments and um showing that you know i i played a lot of the instruments on the album or sorry on the song um and so yeah no i'm very happy with how it came out and he's just very professional and uh did a very good job with the editing and the directing and everything so yeah yeah it definitely looked real good um with the whole beetle vibe and bands and just reminiscing old times and i love how artists get inspired by artists from previous generation absolutely trying to put their own spin to it um you know and it turned out real good i love starlight i when i talked with you the last time i i talked about really liking uh chasing vampires um, yeah and then when i heard starlight he shot the video for that and you know let me listen to this because i heard the album already i had sometimes i gotta go back and listen to it I'm like, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I like what I hear. You know, it's good vibes on that one. So Blue yeah. Reverb is such an incredible album. Um, so if you haven't heard it, go give it a listen. It's on the platforms. Uh, go check out the Starlight music video. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. Check out the all the professionalism on display. You can see uh, Carter here doing all sorts of things in the video. You know, he's he going with one, he's here, over here, he's over there, he's everywhere, man. He's just so, go check it out, a Starlight video. So, Mission the Beatles, the Mission the Beach Boys, um, obviously, our parents listened to that at a young age. And, you know, it, so, somehow we revisit it and it, it still resonates to today's music. Um, oh yeah. I mean, so for you as a musician, being inspired by you know Beach Boys and Beatles, like what was it like? Just you know, as far as being inspired, what what as far as inspiration, like how do you feel about that music that's you know still resonates to today's music? Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, I mean, I I definitely think it's still very much you know, people are still being very inspired by uh, music from that time period, the 60s um, and, and you know, 70s, 80s, what, you know, and so forth. Um, I definitely think that, you know, it's definitely like a mixture of, you know, art, you know, I'm sort of in like that in between, I guess, generation of like, I'm, I'm sort of a millennial. I'm sort of not. I was born in 1998. So I'm like, I'm 23. I'm at sort of the age where my parents are, you know, definitely like around that time period, like they were maybe born just after the Beatles were big, you know, they they lived through the late 70s, 80s, 90s. And so they kind of got a mixture of different decades of music. Um, and I think the fact that, you know, they liked that music, my dad was a big Beatles fan. 
I think it definitely rubbed off me from an early age. And so as many people I'm sure would say the same, you know, just listening to the music that he'd exposed me to in the car, you know, he'd play a CD or on the radio. And just it, it, you know, over time, I just got really into it. And he'd take me to all the Beatles fest growing up. And uh, my mom was more of a Beach Boys fan. So that's why I mentioned that um, she loved the Beach Boys. And um, so I think like, it's definitely still apparent. And, and a lot of the music today, um, touching more on the generational aspect, um, I definitely think that the music that a lot of, you know, what a lot of what we hear today has a lot of those elements. And, you know, as it's been said many times, like, and I, I firmly believe it, like, I do think the Beatles really have, and the Beach Boys have really um, created a foundation and sort of a blueprint for what, you know, rock is supposed to, and pop music is supposed to sound like um, when it is that simple, you know, four group or bigger or smaller kind of lineup. And uh, that's just something I've, obviously like you can tell, you know, I've definitely, I'm still looking up to them to this day with regards to not just the music, but also like the look. Um, and it's not that I'm only looking up to them per se, but you know, obviously you see bands like, it's cool to see the generational uh, trends of inspirational um, kind of like emulating that like a band like oasis who did um all those music videos wonderwall you see like liam gallagher's wearing the same glasses that john lennon wore like he wanted to do that same thing that i'm thinking of so it's like and and maybe i was inspired by him so it's like it's all it's so many people have that kind of connection you know everyone has a different connection to this music um, but at the end of the day people come together and i think it all really is just like something everybody can appreciate um, you know, regardless of even if you're not even like a rock listener per se, I think that um, it's just something like, you know, at least respect what it is and just, you know, it's it's always going to be there no matter what. And I hope that, you know, rocks maybe not the same as it was mainstream wise, but I do think that it's making a comeback. And there are a lot of amazing uh, bands that are coming out now, some that are more discovered than others that are um they're not necessarily the ones winning the grammys but they are definitely a lot of really awesome bands that are sort of you know coming out with music that you're you, you hear it and it's definitely familiar sounding but it's not something you know you've heard before and a lot of it is just great new refreshing ideas almost has that modern spin to it and that's something sort of with my music that i kind of really try to uh go for um because i've done a lot of different genres but this is what i'm sort of focusing on right now is the indie rock alternative rock i would kind of say like i go for like a modern american indie rock kind of taking from the 90s alternative rock and and obviously too with the beatles and, and the 60s sound too um but yeah i mean i think that it's definitely still apparent to this day oh yes it is just whether it's music or whether it's fashion it's it's, it's still there um sometimes you may not have be aware of it but it's it's still there literally uh yeah I'm born, I'm born in the 80s i started to you know become more of a listener in the 90s i must have picked the right decade to listen to because i'm 90s... jealous of you kenny you, uh, <laughs> you gotta live through uh nirvana you gotta live, live yeah. through smashing pumpkins yeah. uh beastie boys and all um, that yeah yeah um yeah i'm i was a hip-hop junkie and then i started listening to other genres of rock new metal yeah some country here and there at this point i'm a i'm a unicorn at this point I'm yeah. literally listening to everything. Uh, and I think that's that kind of helps me do a show like this, just interviewing people, different genres, backgrounds, walks of life, just to hear the stories and the passion. And, you know, while we, you know, we look different and we have different tastes in music, we have the same passion as, you know, supporting indie and local music is out there. So... This yeah, man no right here, Carter Brady, man, he's he's legit. He's the real deal. Um, Blue Reverb is a, a sensational album from start to finish. No skips on there. Uh, so go listen to it if you haven't already. It's on all the platforms. Starlight music video just came out recently. Go um, go watch it on YouTube. 
Um, so we're 13 days into 2022. And so with this album already been out and you got the music video, what is next for Carter Brady? What do you have next on the horizon this year? Yeah. Um, so one thing I have never really mentioned to you, but I'm actually at coincide with, with music. I, I'm also doing grad school. It's like a one year master marketing program. And so, you know, it's definitely something where I'm balancing school and I'm balancing like other things that I have going on. But I think as you know, as you can maybe tell, like music is something that no matter what, I'm always going to keep a huge part of my life and whether it be a serious hobby or even more than that or or less, I'm always going to make time for it. And I'm going to always give give the, the releases that I put out as much potential for exposure as possible. And so doing an interview like this with you, it's it's awesome. And it's just great. You know, I think as much of this kind of thing, like as an indie artist and other people could attest, it's just like it's as you know, you want to make sure you put yourself out there as much as possible. And, and it's also just fun. You know, it's a great, just great opportunity, regardless of if you get a million streams or you get a thousand streams, you know, it's, uh, it's just a really fun thing. And, um, but, you know, obviously, like, you know, you were asking, like, what I've been up to, as far as, you know, future stuff. Um, you know, so I've, believe it or not, even though I'm doing school and stuff, like this past fall, I actually, found time to while blue reverb sorry blue reverb was getting finished um i actually had time to record another album um so there actually will be an album coming fairly soon it's not been you know it's still very much in the rough early phases just because um being a solo artist it's the pandemic still i haven't been able to get drummers to play on those songs and it just takes some time to organize and uh, my my producer was still working on blue reverb in fact um, recently, to go back to Blue Reverb, we actually, um, this is an announcement I haven't mentioned, but I'm actually releasing vinyl for Blue Reverb, very small quantity, but I'm going to put in the time and actually he sent off like the vinyl masters to me the other day. And so I'm going to listen to those before I send them off to the manufacturer. But um, yeah, I'll be having vinyl done for, for Blue Reverb. Um, I'm releasing a Chasing Vampires acoustic version as a single coming up and there's actually a music video for it. Um, and I got this guy, John Covert, who is a session musician from New York. Um, and this is gonna sound crazy to you, but um, he actually played in John Lennon's solo band back in the day. Um, he was the one of the keyboard synth players. Um, he actually plays synthesizer on his version of Stand By Me. So that was just something like, very random, but my producer happened to know him. He's really good friends with him. And this is something like years ago, I would never have dreamed that this, all this stuff that's happened to me has happened. It's still just coming so fast, but I'm just so thankful. I got him to play on the track. And he's actually on a couple songs on the album too, uh, running out of time in my name. He plays some background since, but yeah. So John Covert's in the, in the video too. I got Joe, my producer to film him while he was recording the overdubs of the, on that track. Um, so it's just basically me in the studio and then him. And so, yeah, the chasing vampires will be released. That acoustic version will be released as a single, hopefully within the next couple months. And then the video will be on YouTube too, uh, possibly on Vivo. There'll be a premiere for it. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, this album, hopefully by the, I don't know when in this year it'll come out, but probably towards the end, maybe like the fall, sort of like when this came out, um, it's going to need some time to just really get everything together. Um, but I already sort of have a, a album cover for it and, and a title. I think I'm going to name it Nostalgia Spins. Um, I don't know why I just like the name, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be 12 songs and I sort of took a more of a, more of a different approach, like still kind of like thriving off, like what, like that kind of songwriting process I had for the previous album. Only I decided to make some of the songs a bit shorter, just to kind of change up what I'm releasing, like instead of having more five minute songs start releasing more like two thirty, three minute songs you know and and there's obviously a mix but uh so yeah i've gotten that coming out and um you know just just gonna try to play as much as i can i'm in nashville um right now i didn't mention that but yeah i'm i'm definitely gonna try to get out there and play as much many solo gigs as i can and try to promote this record 
Um, and obviously I'll throw in the covers and, and make sure that the audience is happy. It's not just a full on Carter Brady show, but I'll definitely mix, spice it up a bit. And um, I know some people that book venues and stuff. So hopefully within the next month or so, I'll get that running. Um, maybe every other weekend, go out there and play. And just for me, it's a really good time. I don't really have the time to find a band to teach the songs per se and find a band that's committed to just considering I'm in school and I'm not like full, like I, I sort of consider myself in one foot in one door, one foot in the other, and I keep both open. One's the music, one's kind of like the day job or like kind of like career or marketing aspect. And so I try to do both as much as I can. And I'm, I'm definitely realistic about it, but that's sort of why I haven't like taken the extra step to get a band to kind of play with and, and do gigs only kind of surrounded by the Carter Brady brand kind of thing. But you know, I just do what I can. And I feel like considering how busy I am, I definitely do as much as I can to, you know, do all these different things. And so yeah, all that stuff, I'm definitely really excited about. Um, and I'll definitely be keeping people posted on my social media and, and everything else. So yeah. Check out the website, carterbradymusic.com. Blue Weaver is the recent release album from this incredible young fella. Um, go stream it, go buy it, go purchase it. He's now got vinyls. In case people are people are still into vinyls, believe it or not. Um, and I feel and I hear that the vinyls is doing pretty well. Um, they are, selling, they are doing well. Oh, so this it's selling more than CDs from, from what I've been seeing. Yeah. So um so um and Nostalgia Spins, I like the name of the album already. And <laughs> and you in the um, early stages of it. So I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to that. And uh, man, it's great having you back on the show and getting back in touch with you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. You're a very, very busy young man, but I appreciate you taking the time. And I'll, oh, Any, well, anytime. Thank you so much for having me. This has and, been amazing. And also, thank you for the congrats on my nominations. I appreciate that too. Oh, of course. Um, That's such a huge accomplishment. It's it's awesome. I'm honored to be on the first nominated uh yeah. you know interview this is awesome yeah yeah this show right here at the 14 long years i can now call it award nominated show um i'm used to the individual nominations but this show i don't go n nowhere without this show so i'm very um humble of the nominations so and, and it's because of people like you you know, keeping me going, you know, because I keep supporting y'all local musicians and indie musicians, and I'm here for as long as I, the passion is still there. So um, I'm, I'm here for as long as I can. So um, thank you so much, man. Continue success. And uh, we'll definitely chat again once Nostalgia Spins is good to go. Thank you for your time, man. Of course, Kenny. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, you enjoy the, your evening, enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. Take care. Yeah, absolutely. That was Carter Brady joining me on the 